Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the Home Tech Podcast. Jason Griffin here. So happy to have you with us. And I am joined, as always, by my partner, Seth Johnson. Seth, how's it going? Hey, it, is, it, is it Tuesday? Were you ready for this? You, you sound surprised. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jason. <laughs> it's Tuesday, Seth. Whoa, where, where did the, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I had to remind you a little bit late today. I think you were still stuck in holiday mode. Yeah, yeah. I was stuck in holiday mode all day today. I thought it was Monday, and I get, started getting emails from from uh, you know our guests and, and, and you, and I was going, what are these people talking about? We're not having a pipe. Oh, it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. I'm glad you made it. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Um, we had an, a, a really good interview with uh, uh, tonight with uh, Jimmy Gonzalez uh, from Air Home, which is a, a really progressive uh, whole house audio and really audio system f- for uh, for just about any anybody out there that has a traditionally wired home audio, home audio system. Yeah, I thought it was pretty neat. You know, we've we've seen a lot of movement and development in the quote unquote wireless audio space, which I, I think is a misnomer, and we get into that a little bit in the interview. Um, it's really great to see a, an innovative product like this. I think the design is is very cool. It, it's certainly not going to be for everyone, but I think that it is a very neat product. Um, really, a great design fills a hole in the market for. Uh, just a very simple, um, easy and clean to install audio solution. And and so I really look forward to sharing that conversation with our listeners and be sure to stay tuned in for that. As as usual, Seth, you and I are going to talk about a couple of uh, news stories and events that we saw this week, but we did want to tease that interview. And again, make sure you you stay tuned for that. And, and before we go there, we're going to talk about a couple of stories here. The first one, Seth, that we wanted to hit on is uh, Alexa in a browser. And I know you had, had seen this story. I had read it and you you thought it was was pretty interesting. I think it's a kind of cool idea. They've, they've come up with a way to put Alexa in the browser so that um, I think the main theory being that if you're one of these people out there who maybe is not totally familiar with what the Amazon Echo or Alexa is all about. It's, it's sort of a demo kind of sales tool. Is that, is that how you're understanding it? That's the way I see it. I mean, it, it's allowing you to basically take a test drive on a, I think there's still a $150, $200 uh, product uh, before, you know, check it out before you buy it. I think it's a great idea. Um, you can, you can see basically what, what all the hype is about. Um, you know, you're not going to get all the, you know, home integrations with it that you'd get with the device inside your house, um, you know, from, from our angle, but, uh, you definitely could check out and, you know, ask the weather, uh, you check out how the, the, the voice recognition software works, um, right in your browser. I, I think it's a great idea for, for Amazon to have done this. Um, I think Apple and Google would be do, do well to, uh, to follow their lead, um, because they are definitely leading, uh, in this, in this particular type of products market. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about the voice control um, market lately and how that's evolving. And I think that there are still some people out there who no doubt have a bit of a hard time maybe wrapping their brain around talking to a device and how that could be useful or or helpful. And I think something like this would, would definitely be beneficial for that type of person. I also know the article I read alluded to uh, that this could be used for developers, which I thought was kind of neat, maybe as a brainstorming tool or just to get a a better idea of how the device will interact with its users. So something that um, a developer or anybody out there who maybe has an idea for integrating with Alexa could, could take a look at. So kind of neat. Yeah, definitely. I just, I just saw that there is a, uh, there is some support for developers to kind of test their, basically test their integrations with, with the Alexa plat- skill platform, which is, which is really cool. Um, good for Amazon for doing this. Really good for them. And you know, you know what the best part is about having Alexa in your browser? <laughs> I know. What is it? <laughs> it doesn't collect dust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's to, to not, not your personal information isn't enough. It's going to collect dust too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That echo, you know, sitting on the counter just becomes a dust catcher. But, um, you mentioned collecting personal data, and that is actually segues perfectly into our next story here, and, and that is uh, an article that I read on uh, O'Reilly that I thought was very well written, and I wanted to give a nod to it on this week's show and encourage people to go check it out. It's a thought piece. you know. It, it's not about a specific product per se, but it's just about this idea of how we've really come to expect a lot of things on the, in terms of software to be free. You know, we've, we've evolved 
the internet, I should say, has evolved to a point where, you know, we're using things like Facebook and Google on a daily basis. And we just take it for granted, right, that we don't have to pay for that. We don't have to pay every time we do a search or connect with an old friend on Facebook. But the reason that the economics that allow that are it's it's the fact that our personal information and information and data about us that's very valuable to advertisers is the product. And th this article, uh, the point that it gets to is, well, maybe that's not such a big deal, or maybe that's just something that we've gotten used to um, in the internet's current state. But what happens when the internet is now part of all of the things that surround us? And that personal data is not just what we put up online or what we search online, but it's Things like our coming and going from the house and our travel patterns and our heart rates and et cetera, et cetera. Like, what does the conversation then become about the, the economics of this? And is that level of personal data really worth it to us uh, in order to get these free software services? And, and do we really need to go back and maybe reevaluate that? I thought it was a very interesting point and a well-written article that will include a link uh, in our show notes at hometech.fm slash 114. And I'd encourage you, everybody to go take a look at that. Yeah, it, it's, it's like you said, it's well-written, and it it's um, kind of touching on some points that, that I, I was not so eloquently saying in, in a couple of weeks ago or last week um, when we were talking about um, voice control. Um, you know, uh, to, to, to add on to the what you just said previously, um, and everybody should remember this, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product, yep. period. That's how it works. <laughs> if you're not paying for Facebook, guess what? <laughs> you are the product. You're the product. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, th this this definitely, I think, I think it definitely touches on kind of the point I was trying to make last week where I was saying, um, it, wouldn't it be a shame if we get five years down the road from all this and, and the best we could do was creating an, a, an, a talking advertising machine, you know, like, <laughs> right. This, right. Th that that's the, the business side and the economic side have, have got to, um, be a little bit more about data collection to advertise you. Uh, there's, there's gotta be something else in there. Um, there, there's gotta be something else. I'm really hoping there is something else in that we don't just revolve around this ad driven world that we're in now. Um, to basically integrate with your home. Like th there's got to be a better way. And, uh, this, this kind of touches on that, but I, I think it's a very, very good, like you said, very good thought piece on it. Um, very well written and, um, definitely brings up a couple of other ideas that are, I think are very important and, and pertinent, including this guy. Well, I, I wouldn't say, I would say excluding this, this point where he's talking about, um, he's waiting for the first murder to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> little hyperbole there. Yeah, I, I saw that and I, I, I rolled my eyes a little bit, but I think he's just trying to make a point that we don't know where this all ends, right? And we don't know how much data exactly we're okay with giving away and, and have we really thought about that critically. And that was his point is he's just waiting for some sort of data, you know, sensitive data is going out into the cloud and somehow that enables somebody to commit an egregious crime and he mentions murder. And so, yeah, I think that's a little bit overstated personally. CSI plot. Yeah, exactly. And and so I, I wasn't a huge fan of that. I felt like it maybe took a little bit away from the article, honestly, but his point is still well taken that this is uh, something we need to be thinking very critically about. Yep, I I 100% agree. I mean, it, it's it would be a shame if we get like I said five years down the road and all we have created is um, a microphone into the house uh, that helps these big companies better advertise to us. Um, that would be a shame. Yep. Well, speaking of the Internet of Things, the next story here we want to touch on is uh, a review from the Wirecutter. Seth, you had pointed this one out, and it looked like they did a, a roundup or a, a review of a bunch of uh, home automation hubs. Yep, and the, the winner is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. I mean, this is it's a pretty good article. So, um, smart things, uh, Samsung Smart Things Club. They said eighty dollars for Amazon. Um, at the time, I guess the price has dropped a little bit. It used to be a hundred dollars, but it's down to eighty dollars now. Um, uh, they they also had Wink as the kind of the runner up. But um, I, I, we've we've kind of been bashing Smart Things for a little while here, and I, I know they've been taking some some hits in the press uh, for their security issues that really, really weren't their security issues. Um, uh, they 
they they out they they kind of addressed a couple of those things uh, that we've been talking about uh, specifically the security issues um, where they said you know that this these are edge cases they really were part of a research project they got blown out of proportion right and smart things has already fixed most of them um, then they also the other thing that you and I have been briefed by our our listeners on is the reliability of the product and they said you know we we put this thing through the ringer and it, it worked fine. So I guess your mileage may vary. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Yeah. It looks like they reviewed 20 smart hubs is what they're saying here. I, I think Seth, you were talking to me before the show that maybe some of the products they were considering a hub might not be in the truest definition of the word a hub, but I still think, you know, for them to go out there and, and, and review 20 different products, this had to be a very big undertaking. And, um, I think that there's certainly got to be some useful information in here for anybody who's evaluating this landscape and maybe trying to make a decision or, or maybe just trying to understand, you know, what's out there and what, what are the pros and cons to these different, different, uh, products. Yeah. They, they included HomeKit, which is not a hub. It's an API or a framework that only developers get to use inside of Apple ecosystems. And they included, uh, Lutron, with a, they even put a picture of it, Lutron Caseta Smart Hub, which is not the name of the product at all. Uh, the, the <laughs> Lutron Caseta Smart Bridge Pro is what it is, or Smart Bridge and the Smart Bridge Pro are the two products. And those two are actually bridges for the Lutron Caseta products. They're not, in fact, hubs for the home. Although they do offer some, I, I just saw that they were offering integrations now with like Nest. Um, it's still not really a hub. It's just, it's a, it's a bridge that allows you to communicate from your phone over to the light devices, which aren't Wi-Fi or not Z-Wave and Zigbee. It's a, it's, it's all it is. Yeah, and I, it just looks, I'm, I'm skimming through here as you're talking about, uh, there's a section in here that explains how they picked, and I think this is relevant. It does look like they narrowed it down to a final test group of six different products. So I don't know where the 20 is or, and how that got narrowed down, Um but for what it's worth, it looks like the final six models that they looked at were the uh, the D-Link version of the Staples Connect Hub, which we've been talking about, and that uh, is a product that looks like its days are numbered. Um, the Insteon Hub Pro, Lowe's Iris Smart Hub, Lutron Caseta Smart Lighting Dimmer Kit, uh, Smart Things, and Wink. So those were the final six that it looks like they did the real... A deep review on and the D Link actually the Staples Connect was actually the runner up, <laughs> uh, but as they it says as they were published going to publish on this uh, they were sent an email or, or noticed that oh funny yeah yeah that's that's got to be horrible you've put all your time and effort into testing this thing and then all of a sudden uh, it's gone hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well and and we have heard that the product will continue to be supported at least in, you know in that it's not going to go completely dark but uh, it does look like a product that will. Uh, you know, support will not be continuing indefinitely on that product. So yeah, I agree with you. I'm sure they spent a lot of t a lot of time, uh, you know, kicking the tires on it and getting their thoughts in order and getting it ready to put up. And then to find that out had to be a little bit, uh, a little bit disappointing. Yep, absolutely. Well, it's a it's a good article, and if you we we get this question a lot, like where do I start? I'm just looking for some basic stuff. This is a pretty good article, and I think it gives a lot of the pros and cons about the two systems that they picked um, between the Wink and the, and the Smart Things. I think if you are looking for some very basic things, um, you have some good options there. Uh, yeah, great all, starting point. Insteon, all the stuff is all the stuff there is pretty good. So I would, I would say, if somebody asks me in the future where do I start, I'm just looking for some DIY stuff. I would say go here, <laughs> uh, read this article. If you can't figure it out, then maybe call a pro to come in and, and do something. But um, it, it's lots of good information there. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, let's move on. We got two more stories here that we're going to hit quickly before we jump into our interview with uh, Jimmy from Air Home. And these stories both relate to cutting the cord, Seth, which I believe is a topic that you are uh, getting ready to really immerse yourself in. Yes, the antenna is installed. The cable's ah. down, the, down the wall and to my TiVo. And as I was going to connect it up to my TiVo Romeo, I think I got the Plus. It's like the bigger one with the six tuners in it. Mm -hmm. um, turns out TiVo has taken away the, like, it used to have a cable input and an antenna input. Uh, it's only, it's a single input now. So I got to like, go back to the drawing board and 
uh, reprogram, ah. go through the TiVo reprogramming and everything. <laughs> and I, that wasn't going to happen. So not yeah. until I completely cut off Comcast is that going to happen. And I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but I think it'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks. And you, but you are, you are set on making the leap. You're, you're going to cut the cord. It's happening. Yeah. All definitely. right. Well, that's great. I, I definitely, I think that it's become a much more viable option than it, for a lot of people than it was even just a year or two ago. And there's so many different things out there now that you can use. And I think that, um, I know myself and and our listeners will definitely be curious, Seth, to hear your, you know, how you progress through those decisions and and what your results are. Yeah. I'm going to be just as curious, uh, to see how well this works out. Um, and what shows I'm going to miss or, or not miss so much. Um, we, we tend to watch a lot of movies, uh, and, and and not so much live TV, but we do enjoy it when it is on. Um, and that, that kind of segues into another story we saw today. Um, Amazon Fire uh, is going to be uh, live streaming video uh, and, and, and TV channels, which I think is pretty huge. Yeah, it looks like it. it um, this was an article that I found uh, via a tweet by Dave Zatz, who does a really great job, we've mentioned him before, of uh, following this evolving TV space and things like cutting the cord and TiVo and um, just uh, all the different over the top services and and things like that, that are evolving in that space. He's a great resource to follow for that. And he had uh, included a link to this story from uh, AF TV news. So this is a site that's dedicated to um, Amazon fire TV and, and really just keeping a very close eye on that. And it looks like a gentleman from this site did a bit of a dissection of a, certain version, I guess the newest version, presumably, of the Amazon Fire TV, and found um, a lot of strong evidence in there supporting the fact that uh, live streaming video uh, is coming to the Amazon Fire TV. I won't get into the specifics of what he found, but in general, um, it comes down to a lot of different sort of buttons that he found in there, things like watch live and and labels for certain parts of the screen that would say on live now. And, and so very compelling um, evidence, so to speak, that he found that live TV is coming. And I think that's a great thing. You know, there were some comments in the article about oh, live TV is overrated. And I, I think that particularly maybe the younger uh, millennials and people that that really have grown up with this idea of streaming and on demand um, may be quicker to see the market shifting completely away from live TV. Personally, I don't see that happening for a very long time. I think there are a few reasons for that. What, the obvious one that really comes to mind is is sports and, and live events like award shows. Um, people are always going to be drawn to those and, and want to watch them live. Uh, but the other thing that I think doesn't get as much discussion and I think is equally as important is the fact that when I think about my viewing habits, I watch very little TV these days. Um, But when I do watch TV, sometimes what I want to do is just turn on like the evening news or whatever it is and just let it play. It's kind of in the background and I don't want to have to actively think about what show I'm going to watch. I don't have half an hour to sit down and intently watch an episode of so-and-so miniseries. I just want something playing in the background. And live TV is is really the only way to go for that. And so I think that's that's part of the conversation that gets missed a little bit. And I think that live TV being added to a product like the Amazon Fire TV is a, a great addition and will draw people into it that otherwise wouldn't even consider it. Absolutely. And that's, that's the reason I'm putting the antenna in. I mean, I still want to see live TV. I still want to see, you know, uh, the... Buccaneers play. I had to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, bl- I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but hey, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, they did an excellent job this yes. year. Yes. So. Yeah, they um, did. So yeah, I'd still want to see th- those. Uh, th- you mentioned the award shows. We watch the Academy Awards. We watch the Grammys every single year. Like that's something we do. So um, definitely interested in watching those live. I don't want to see those after the fact or pre you know pre recorded version of it or anything. I, I want to see those as they happen so I can follow along on social media and and keep up with with everything that's going on there. That's it's just something that we, you know my wife and I really enjoy doing. But at yep. the same time, we we do want to have the on demand movie experience, and I I think that the like having the antenna and having um you know options like Amazon uh PlayStation View is another one uh, Kevin Tofel did a a really good deep dive on the PlayStation View um setup which we'll we'll link in the article and I would definitely keep in mind for research research um when when I when I go into my deep dive um 
on on what they do. But PlayStation's offering a, a cable service where you can get channels, live TV channels, ESPN, a bunch of good stuff for a you know, fairly low cost per month price. Um, so definitely there's a lot going on in this live space. And I, I think it's killer. I, what, I, what I really think is cool is if Amazon has this, um, that means you're going to see Google uh, come out with something. Roku may have something. Apple TV may actually finally get something. Um, all, all of these other devices out there um, will be competing for this. And, you know, it, it, it'll be uh, that interface, you know, that channel zero that we're talking about. Yep. Where you're tuning into an interface and you're picking the channel you want to watch. You may be able to watch CBS live or you can watch a pre-recorded show from the CBS app. And, and, and it, I think this idea of channels is just going to completely disappear and kind of fade into the background. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the battle for input zero is kind of the term that people use, and so they want they want to be the interface, like you said, and the platform, so to speak. Not not to use the overuse the platform word, but it, it really is becoming um, a bit of a land grab right now to see companies like Amazon and um, you mentioned Kevin Tofel's tweet about uh, the PlayStation View, and he seems to be very happy with it so far. In his tweet, he says one month in, and I haven't looked back. Um, so he seems to be having a good experience. And I think that, um, like I said, we'll be, I'll be very curious to hear, uh, how things go for you. And, and this is something that, uh, I think is just becoming more viable for more people. You know, there are, uh, the listeners to our show in general are probably very technical early adopter type people, but we've all got, you know, partners and spouses and children at home that we have to think about their viewing experience as well. And, and I think that's really where we're starting to see things maybe turn a corner a little bit is to get um, cutting the cord to a point where it's going to get that, that spouse or partner acceptance factor, right. That we always kind of joke about. It's not a joke. <laughs> it, it, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm, it is not. No I joke. Think something like Tableau TV would have been an excellent pick for me. Uh, and I think my wife probably would have picked up on it. Uh, but we're so used to TiVo. So that's, you know, we've kind of head down that road with TiVo. Uh, it, it has everything that we need into it, but I'm also going to be looking at all the other stuff out there at the same time. Um, I've just got to wait to cut off Comcast and find out where the holes are and everything that we're missing. So, well, maybe you can record that phone call. Yeah. Oh God. Like rage. You can go rage quit. I am so not looking forward to that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, let's get into our interview here. We've, uh, like we said, we've got Jimmy Gonzalez on from uh, Air Home, and it's a really cool distributed audio product that has a very, like you said, Seth, I think the perfect word for it, a very progressive design. They've really come at distributed audio in the home from a, a, a unique angle and have thought about it very differently from anyone else that I've seen doing it. And so we, I really enjoyed uh, speaking with Jimmy and learning about the product. And so without further ado, let's get started. Hey, Jimmy, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. We're happy to have you on. We're excited to get in and talk about Air Home here. I think it looks like a really uh, a cool product, and I look forward to exploring that. But before we jump in, why don't you give our listeners a bit of a, a personal introduction and maybe some of your background as well? Sure. Um, so I'm Jimmy Gonzalez. I, uh, I am the uh, Vice President of Business Development for Air Home, um, but I wasn't always on the uh, manufacturer side. My history is uh, in audio video integration. I've done it for about 20 years, um, everywhere from um, did a lot of commercial projects as well as a lot of high-end residential product projects. Um, a lot of work with control systems like Crestron, um, as well as like uh, you know, done plenty of distributed audio, distributed video. I've done lots of uh, digital signage um, from for years before that was even a category in the commercial commercial world. Um, I've owned companies. I sold my company to a large electrical contractor, um, which where I worked was a very interesting perspective because I think there's a trend in the integration market where um, general contractors want to deal with less and less subcontractors. So I see electrical contractors taking on more and more audio video um, or low voltage work. Uh, So I wanted to be a part of that. So I had some history in that, seeing how big general contractors and big electrical contractors operate and uh, sort of felt like I'd done as much as I wanted to do on that side and wanted a new challenge. And I got into uh, working for a manufacturer like uh, Zenovia Electronics and Air Home. Great. 
Well, we love the backstory. You're a, a man after my own heart, and Seth and I are both professional integrators, and, and a lot of the uh, listeners in our audience are as well, so they'll definitely relate to that background. But let, let's move on to what you've got going now, and, and, and just give us the quick elevator pitch. What is Air Home? So Air Home is a distributed audio solution, um, but it's uh, we're wired, wired speakers, um, but wireless, uh, wireless source. So what makes it unique is that it's a wall-mounted design. So instead of sitting in a rack or sitting inside of cabinetry, it's mounted to the wall. And then there are five modular amplifiers. Um, four of them are stereo and one of them surround sound. And they get their source by using Apple's, or by using Apple's AirPlay. Um, so what's nice about that is, is that anyone with an Apple device or even the Android devices now um, can airplay straight from their device to the amplifiers uh, for audio throughout the house. So it's nice because you don't have to use a proprietary app in order to play through the system. All you have to do is just use whatever app you want to use, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, XM Radio, uh, Apple Music, uh, Audible if you're into audiobooks. Whatever you want to do, you can just airplay it to the amps, and then that's hardwired to speakers. Right, right. So anything that supports airplay can be used. And I think that's a, a neat way to approach it. And, and I definitely, I, I like the look of the hardware design. It looks like a very, uh, a cool approach. And I look forward to getting into that a little bit more. Uh, before we do, I got one more high level question in, in researching the company a little bit and, and getting prepared for the interview. I noticed a few names, one you alluded to earlier, which was Zenovia, and there was a Roswell Global. And then you have Air Homes. So you've got the three of these names. And I was wondering if you could just quickly explain to our audience what the relationship is between those three um, entities. Sure. So uh, Air Home is the product and Zenovia is the parent company or the manufacturer. Um, but Zenovia's parent company is uh, Roswell Global. And part of in Roswell Global's family of companies, um, there's Roswell Marine or Roswell Wake Air. And that's that's the company that started about 20 years ago um, when the president, Robert Oswald, um, had an idea for wakeboard to uh, towers for wakeboard boats. And uh, he developed that, patented it, um, and then started developing other things that would hang off of the wakeboard towers. So naturally, he got into audio. He got into lighting. Um, and then somewhere along the way, he connected with Logan Jacobs. Uh, who was a rock and roller who spent some time doing some system integration between tours and uh, said, hey, you know, I want to rethink, um, I want to totally rethink this distributed audio piece because I think it can be a lot simpler than it is today. So he started um, basically in the basement with a couple guys developing the product, got connected with Robert from Roswell, and then um, Zenovia became a, a, a company under Roswell Global. So um, that's where we are today. We have offices in Canada as well as in uh, our corporate headquarters is in Rockledge, Florida. Very cool. So, yeah, um, you mentioned this, you, you kind of touched on this briefly about the conception of, uh, of air home and, um, you know, what interests me in this product when, when we came across it was, um, how different it was and yet how simple um, it was so. I guess let's let's talk about about form factor and and how this all gets put together uh, and how it all works. Um, Air home is basically the. I'll let you go <laughs> from here. Yeah, so it's it's wall mounted with the, with like I said the modular amplifiers and it's it looks really slick and it looks like you know something you'd be you know some folks might be proud to show off um, and hang on the wall, but it's really not meant to be out in the middle of nowhere. We just wanted it to look nice. Um, so rather than, um, you know, the idea is it's still going to go like close to a structured media enclosure, or it's going to go, um, and maybe in a, a master bedroom closet, wherever you're bringing all of your other home run cables, it makes just natural sense to put the air home in that same location. So when you're running all your data and your coax cable, you can also run your speaker cable at the same time to the same location. Um, the way that it's set up is, is that, you know, you only buy as many amplifiers as you need. So ideally, if you wanted to get started, let's say you're starting in a house and you said, well, I know I want to have distributed audio, but I just can't, um, you know, I just can't come up with all the funds today or I want to grow it over time. You can add amplifiers to it over time as you go. Um, so that's, a, that's something that's very interesting and very different. Um, the other thing that's cool is all of the wiring is concealed behind the panel. 
Um, so all of the, there's a one electrical outlet and then all your speaker wires, it's made to be mounted on a stud and then, uh, electrical comes in on one side of the stud and speaker wire comes in on the other side of the stud and it's all hidden behind this panel. Um, so it's a very clean, nice look, um, where, like I said, you could put it out in the living room if you wanted to, but you know, it'll look slick as well, uh, in, uh, in a utility room or a, or a closet somewhere. Yeah, I, I think I inadvertently just wired 141 condos for this product. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we should like, talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, yeah, and it's a solution for that because it's like it's always been – it's always – there's always been this idea of everything has to be custom or everything has to be a little bit different, right? Like um, – you, you, and it's always – I think when people developed projects and they've done systems and houses, like it's never been a way to – to say, you know, one size fits all. And this kind of gets you there, right? It gets us all closer to that because now you can say, all right, I'm running speaker wire to these locations. You can pick and choose how many rooms you want to have. You can name the rooms, whatever you want to name them. Um, it makes it really simple and, you know, really simple and straightforward for both the person on the install side, as well as the buyer, whether the buyer be a developer, a homeowner, a home builder, um, you know, anybody that you're trying to explain the system to. Right. Right. I think once you, once you see it and we'll, we'll definitely put a link to the website, um, in our show notes for the show here. Um, but when, once you see it, you kind of get the idea of how it works and the, and the little modular design that you guys have come up with. Um, I, I noticed there were two different types of amps you got, you had on there. Um, one was like a stereo pair. So, you know, a, a room, uh, like a, a bedroom or a, a lanai or something where you'd, you'd have audio on it. Uh, and then the other one w was a 5.1 for a surround sound? Yes, yep. Um, so, yeah, so there's – and all the rooms actually can support – even the stereo rooms can support um, an active subwoofer. So you can wire a subwoofer in if you wanted to in those stereo rooms. Um, and the 5.1, yeah, is a separate – it's the amp at the end that's a little bit fatter than the other four. And um, that's made for if you've got like a TV room or a living room, just sort of a casual. It's not meant to replace a home, you know, if you're having a dedicated home theater or something like that. Um, but it's really slick, especially when you start thinking about the Apple TV. Um, you know, we feel like we are a little bit ahead, ahead of our time, but there's been a lot of stories, as I'm sure you know, recently with DirecTV, Hulu, YouTube, whatever Apple's working on about live content coming um, to streaming media players and becoming more of an app. Um, then with FCC trying to do away with cable boxes and satellite boxes, um, or at least, you know, find alternatives to it. You know, I think by the end of this year, starting next, there's going to be a lot of content where people in those rooms, you know, not, like I said, not a dedicated theater, not a gaming room. Um, but if I'm in the, in my bedroom, I can have an Apple TV, uh, with an, this air home app and I can use the, Apple TV remote because the new one has the volume control on it and I can just airplay straight out of an Apple TV into the system. And it's just a very simple, very clean installation. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I agree with Seth. I think that the form factor is, is really interesting. Talk about, um, I guess, let me ask you really quickly, is there a way to expand the system beyond five zones or, or are you limited at, at the five zones of audio? Oh no, you just add more panels for however many you need. So if, you know, we've got lots of people out there that have two, three panels, four panels sure. uh, in a house. So you just add as many panels and just stack them, you know, on top of each other, give them a couple inches of clearance and, uh, and put them on top of each other up a wall. Okay. Got it. I figured that was the case. I just wanted to make sure, um, moving on from the hardware a little bit, let's talk about the app experience. Now I know from looking at the website, at least I believe there is an app that you use to do some of the initial configuration. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. So you, yeah, you only need the app to configure the system. So all you have to do is, um, it's a, it's an Apple MFI device. So it's, it's a Apple, um, you know, it's licensed to, to, to work with Apple. And so we've got a USB connection at the bottom of it. So you just take a connection, like you make a connection to your phone, the app will open up. Um, it'll say, what do you want to name this room? You just type in whatever name you want to give it. And then it, you say what network you want to connect to. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi sharing built in. So you just say that you want to share the, whatever network your phone's on and your configuration process is done at that point. 
Um, so it's really nice that you can go in there and set up an amp in just a couple of minutes and you can set up a whole panel in you know, about five or six minutes. Got it. And then, and then from there, I want to make sure we hit on this because I think this is a, a key point that will help people understand what makes the product different. And I want to see if I'm understanding this correctly, that really that app is only used for the initial configuration. And once the system is up and running, you are then free to use whatever app you would like, as long as it supports airplay uh, to play music through the system. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yep. Yep. That's correct. So yeah, you really, I mean, there's a couple things you can do in it. You can mute rooms, you can add passcodes to rooms. Um, there's a couple things like that. If you wanted to restrict people from playing in certain rooms, you know, like Robert had, when he was first testing the system, his kids would like to airplay at six o'clock in the morning music to his bedroom. So he figured, okay, we can't have that anymore. <laughs> so we put a passcode on the master bedroom. Um, so, you know, there's a couple little things you can do for that, but you know, most of the time, pretty much all the time when you're using the system, you're just using airplay. Cool. Cool. How do I know airplay from my experience has been kind of limited into like a single zone. Uh, you know how it comes up with the little speaker thing there. How, how do you, mm -hmm. uh, do you, I guess, do you use the app to kind of group rooms together where you're playing one source to multi rooms? No, if you want to do multi rooms, then you're going to use the computer for, for right now. Um, so you can use airplay from iTunes or there's some other, um, there's some other software as well that lets you play like in a party mode in multiple rooms. But right now it's a, it's a iOS limitation that iOS devices can only airplay to a single, uh, room. So, which, you know, for casual listening, Hey, I'm in the kitchen. I want to listen in the kitchen. That's what you do. You know, party mode. Hey, I've got some people coming over. I need to set up multiple rooms. You go to the computer and, and set up multiple rooms and, and play it that way. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, what about uh, Android for the Android for the other 50% of the people out there? <laughs> Is there a support for Android? Yes. Well, you know, you can get a um, AirPlay app for Android. Um, so there's a number of those available. Um, so Android users can AirPlay out to our system. Um, and then HTC just announced um, support for AirPlay and the HTC 10. And then they also did a software update. So I think it's 8 and 9 also support airplay now natively so it's a very similar um, experience to having it on an apple device um, so that's really good we're really excited about that and we think it's you know we think and hope that you know other manufacturers uh, of android phones will follow suit very cool. Okay, well, I'm sold. So uh, how much? <laughs> I guess it's the next. Everybody's probably itching for that that question to be asked. So how much? How much am I looking at um, to basically start off with? Uh, I guess there's some upfront costs for just the what we what would you consider the shell or like the internal piece, and then for the little modules, there'd probably be, and of course for speakers, um, there'd be costs for those three things. So I guess what am I looking at per zone? So it's, you know, it is, it is modular, so it's hard to say exactly, you know what I mean? Like the system's this much, um, but like the, the panel itself is seven ninety nine, and then this is retail price. Uh, so seven ninety nine retail, and then it's four ninety nine for each individual stereo amplifier. Gotcha. And then, yeah. And then surround amp is eight forty nine. Very cool. Okay. So, uh, so just to sum that up again, you got the, the panel and then you've got the stereo amplifiers and the, and the surround sound amplifiers as well. And so, like you said, it's a modular system. You can, you have the ability to, you know, put this together in the way that you want. So you can start small and then, uh, scale up a little bit from there. Right. Right. So yeah, so you can get started with a, with a panel and one amp and you're off to the races or you can, you know, fully load it up, you know, a couple panels and. You know, a couple panels and 12 amps, 15 amps, gotcha. you want to do it. Gotcha. So let's uh, zoom out a little bit. I was, uh, look, again, looking at the website in preparation for our conversation, and I know you guys have an Air Home Partner Program uh, listed on your website. What can you tell us about that? Um, so that's, you know, there's two sides to that, um, working with builders and also working with integrators on that. Um, you know, we've found that the builder market has been sort of looking for a solution like this that was simple and repeatable um, and that they felt like, you know, some some builders have really, you know, skilled and talented integrators on board. And some builders just have guys that know how to get cable from one point one place to another. <laughs> so um, it's one of those things the system can be set up so that. Um, you know, if a builder can use 
their existing subcontractors to install this system. Um, and it's not a hard thing to, um, you know, it's not a hard thing for them to do or for them to handle. And then also as part of that um, partner program for both the builders and the integrators, uh, we've got pretty generous uh, show home system uh, promotions as well as sales displays. Because I think that's one thing that's always been missing in distributed audio. Like if you go into a model home, like nine times out of 10, they're playing music, right? Because who wanted to want to walk through a model home that was completely quiet? Um, but no matter what the system is, like nobody knows, nobody knows about it. It's sitting in a closet somewhere, or it's stuffed in a cabinet some someplace, and nobody knows or understands what's playing. Um, what's neat about air home and a model home is that, you know, a homeowner can walk through, they can join the network in the model home, and then start playing their music, their own personal music that they like in the house, um, and it makes a real emotional connection with people when they're looking at a home. Uh, when they're listening to their music, not some canned music. And also it sort of breaks down that barrier of technology um, where it's like, hey, I can do this. This isn't a hard thing for me. I didn't have to download an app. I didn't have to get trained on how to do this. Um, so we have these sales displays that show a quick little video that um, like highlight the product and then also talk about how to connect and start playing music inside the show home. Uh, so that's something that people have been really excited about as well because obviously – you know, you've got to show it and people have to experience it um, for them to, you know, right. really, truly understand it. So I think that's something that's very unique um, that other other manufacturers haven't haven't done. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Is the product going to be sold exclusively through your partners or, or will there will there be options for a, a consumer just to purchase it directly if they if they choose to do that? Yeah, if a consumer wants to purchase it directly, um, it's available on the website. Uh, we've got a pretty neat little configuration tool. You can build a system up from scratch and fill out a, you know, and then uh, and, and put it into a shopping cart. And you can buy it through there. Um, other than that, it'd be available through members of the partner program. Gotcha. Um, one question I did want to ask in this world of wireless audio, and, and I, I think that's kind of a misnomer. The term wireless audio is a bit misleading, and I say that all the time in my line of work. It's a sort of a separate conversation, but I think it's something that you guys as a company clearly are probably faced with that question all the time. Well, why isn't it wireless? Why isn't it wireless? Um, you know, talk about the decision to use an architecture that that really relies on external hardwired, you know, in ceiling or in wall type of speakers. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're, I think we're the fact that the product is made to be built in and made to be part of the house. Um, you know, right now, there's a lot of wireless speakers that are all countertop speakers. Um, and those, you know, those fill a need, right? Those show that people want to have music in their homes. Um, but if you look, people also don't want, um, you know, a bunch of devices cluttering up their countertops in all of their rooms throughout their house either. Um, so really the elegant and the correct solution is to have something that's in the ceiling and more or less disappears. Um, so like I said, I think, I think it's sort of that, if I was to make the comparison and the comparison we make a lot is those, uh, countertop speakers are sort of like the microwave, right? Um, and used to be that you'd walk into every home and every home had a microwave on the counter on the kitchen counter. And then one day you started going into homes and they were all built into the cabinetry. So I think it's that same sort of trend overall, or that's the way we see it is, you know, audio really should just be an appliance in your house. Um, and it should be built into your house. So you do that through in-ceiling speakers, and there's no way currently to have wireless in-ceiling speakers. So we've, you know, you've got to you got to do it. So you've got to have a, you know, wireless sources are obviously a natural, uh, you know, the natural way to do it. But um, you know, the speakers have to be hardwired. Yep, I, I I'm going to agree 100. <laughs> percent They sound so much better too that way. Um, yeah. I, that that said, I mean, I guess. Do you see uh, like a, a portable countertop version in in your future, or does that kind of set you up to compete with all of the like uh, a, a ton more product? There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of other folks out there, and they all make you know. There's some nice products out there, and I don't you know what I mean. Like I don't that that we just the the entire product from the time it was conceived to now has just been designed to be different and a different type of solution. So it's not something that we're it's not something that we're focused on because, like I said, we sort of see this um, built-in solution as, as as really the way things are going to go ultimately 
you know, obviously you're always going to have homes that can't be remodeled that you can install in ceiling speakers in, but you know, um, that's, that's the real thing. It's just, you know, people need, it, the, the industry has to, has to, it's just a shame. I don't know. Like it's a shame when you breaks my heart, like it breaks my little heart when I walk into a new home that was just constructed and it's got a whole bunch of countertop speakers on it. It's, it, it's just, it's like, it's, you know, this space is a premium. It's not, you know, uh, you, you know, who needs another thing you have to dust? I don't know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's a good point. Very good point. <laughs> As I was staring at the Amazon Echo that's got dust all over it in the corner. <laughs> so, um, I'll kind of head back towards the infrastructure, um, real quick. It just kind of reminded me, uh, we've got to have a pretty robust Wi-Fi system in your house if you've got, um, mm -hmm. especially on the homes that you were talking about with you know four and five panels. Um, what do you, what do you typically recommend for something like that? Or are, are you able to just use something like an airport extreme and, and it works fairly well? Yeah, we've had really great success with airport extremes. Um, we've, we've kind of got a couple, a couple little tips for configuring them, but we've had really good luck with extremes. We've also tested, um, some other solutions as well. So like in our office, we've tested the Luxel solution that works really well. Um, the arrow is pretty good. I think it'll improve. Um, over time. So yeah, we're testing other solutions as well. So we kind of have like different, you know, for, for different folks that don't necessarily want to have an airport extreme, but some other, uh, wireless, uh, access point. Sure. Well, we alluded to it a little bit, but just given the timing of everything and, and what's going on in the market, I, I want to get your thoughts on products like Echo and now Google has their Google home product. And, and again, we're talking about a countertop device, but it also does house audio. We're hearing speculation that Apple is going to be coming out with one of these fairly soon. What impact do you see this product category having in general on the distributed audio market? I think it's, I think it's really, I think it's really exciting. Um, because once again, it shows that people want it, right? Like it shows that homeowners want audio in their, in their house. And it shows that they want voice control and they want simple control, right? Like, cause that's what voice control really comes back to. They just want to be able to talk to something and have it, um, right. and have it work. Um, whereas, you know, sometimes you get caught up in that like thought process of, Oh, I've got to have this panel that does all of this stuff, or I've got to have this app that does all this stuff. And you, then you realize, well, people just want to, you know, they just want to talk to something <laughs> and have it work. Yep. Um, so I think it's good. I think that, you know, really for me it goes back to that same like <clears throat> we sit on our amplifiers sit on the network just like these other devices um and as these products mature and as more and more things come out i think there's a real place for uh for us in that because once again people are going to want to be talking to they're just going to want to be talking in a room and they want to have the audio come from the speakers that are around them not the speaker that's sitting on the countertop Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of interesting developments coming in that way that, that, you know, make us still a very relevant fit for all of that. Um, so you can have a real installed solution and you're not integrating a bunch of countertop cylinders, uh, throughout a house. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Well, very good. We're, we're running out of our, uh, running tight on our time here, I should say. We really appreciate you coming on to join us. What would be next for Air Home? What are you guys getting excited about these days? Um, well, I mean, we've the product's been out for about a year and a half, but we've really just, I, I came on about uh, six months ago. We've really just been pushing really hard um, on, you know, talking to different builders, talking to different integrators, talking to different people in different markets and getting them excited about it. So, um, I, I'm just excited about the opportunities that lie ahead and, and, you know, continuing some of these discussions, um, uh, about, about technology and, and really trying to get music, um, into people's homes. Very good. Very good. Well, Jimmy, I just want to thank you very much for uh, taking your time, uh, late at night here to come on the show and, and talk with us about air home. If somebody wants to learn more or reach out to you, um, uh, what's the best way that they can do that? Um, so their website's really good tool for that. Uh, just go to www.airhome.io. Um, so that's air, air home, A I R H O M E dot I O I as an igloo, O as an ostrich. Gotcha. Well, once again, Jimmy, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on and, uh, we wish you all the best of luck with air home and, and we'll be, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on the product. So thanks again, Jimmy, and we will let you go. All right. Thanks so much guys. <laughs>